You see why this hits differently. It probably hit differently for you too, because it's not just about Trump. First, they come for Trump. Then they come for people associated with Trump. Then they're going to come for conservatives dissenting. That means you and I are going to be on the chopping block next. Our free speech is on the line. Harmeet Dillon tweeted, this is uh, not tweeted, posted on X, I mean. Harmeet Dillon posted on X, this is element number 10, about those who were giving Trump legal advice, regardless of whether you agree with the legal advice. This is what she said. Giving legal advice, even theoretically bad or wrong legal advice, should never be criminalized in this country. The fact that lawyers are scared to even say this today is a testament to the chilling effect of the politicized indictments and bar witch hunts of recent years. That's exactly right. There's a reason why a president is supposed to have executive privilege. It's so he can discuss good ideas and bad ideas with his advisor. If he's not able to discuss bad ideas with his advisors, then he risks actually propagating bad ideas if simply discussing a bad idea is a crime. And that's even, that's even I guess, accepting for the sake of the argument, the premise that what he was discussing or the advice that he was being given was bad advice. It doesn't matter. Sean Davis of The Federalist it compared this very apropos what's happening to Trump to what's happening to uh, what's not happening to Hunter Biden. This is element 11. Sean says, understand where we are. They inked a secret deal with Joe Biden's bagman son to keep him out of prison for money laundering, bribery, tax evasion, and influence peddling. And they're criminally charging Trump for tweeting at people to turn on the TV. Because of course, turning on the TV is also part of this indictment. It says, on or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account, Real Donald Trump, quote, Georgia hearings now on OANN, amazing, end quote. The indictment reads, this was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Can you imagine telling people to turn on their TVs and watch a government proceeding is now an act of conspiracy? Meanwhile, the prosecutor, Fannie Willis, is refusing to say whether she has been in communication or is colluding with special counsel Jack Smith. Republicans in Congress, you can tweet about this all you want, but there are acts that you can actually take that would make a difference here. You can subpoena Fannie Willis and the communications between Fannie Willis and Jack Smith, between Fannie Willis and the Department of Justice, and find out between Fannie Willis and the Biden administration even, and find out what that collusion has been. Because make no mistake, there is collusion here. There's also things that Republicans at the local level can do here. Republican district attorneys can play by the same rules that the Democrats apparently are saying it's totally fine to use. And that is Republican DAs can indict Democrats who have committed crimes. Democrats like Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Democrats like James Comey and Jim Clapper. Democrats like Hillary Clinton. All of these, I mean, think about in 2016, the chance of the Trump rallies were lock her up about Hillary Clinton. But what happened when Trump got in office? Nothing, nothing, because we didn't want to make the appearance of targeting a political enemy. Well, if the Democrats are going to do it, Republican DAs ought to do it too. Give Democrats a little taste of their own medicine, make them a little less bold in weaponizing the power of government to target Republicans. And in this case, Republicans are completely morally fine doing this because the Democrats have actually committed crimes that they deserve to be indicted for. Vivek Ramaswamy had a very good response to this indictment of President Trump. This is element number 14. If we could bring this on the screen. He wrote, here we go again, another disastrous Trump indictment. It's downright pathetic that Fulton County publicly posted the indictment on its website even before the grand jury had finished convening. Since the four prosecutions against Trump are using novel and untested legal theories, it's fair game for him to do the same in defense. Immediately file a motion to dismiss for a constitutional due process violation for publicly issuing an indictment before the grand jury had actually signed one. He, could make, he should make a strong argument on these grounds and it would send a powerful message to the ever expansive prosecutorial police state. As someone who's running for president against Trump, I'd volunteer to write the brief to the court myself. Prosecutors should not be deciding U.S. presidential elections. And if they're so overzealous that they commit constitutional violations, then the cases should be thrown out and they should be held accountable. Vivek is 100% correct. 100% correct. So DeSantis responded to the Trump indictments and I wasn't 
super impressed with his response, which we're going to break down right now. Let's bring this up on the screen. This is this is his response. So I haven't had a chance to read it all, but I will tell you is Atlanta has huge problems with crime right now. And there has been an approach to crime which has been uh, less than exacting. Uh, I think there have been criminals that have let out that shouldn't have been let out. And so they're now doing an inordinate amount of resources uh, to try to shoehorn this contest over the 2020 election into a RICO statute, which was really designed to be able to go after organized crime, uh, not necessarily to go after uh, political activity. And so uh, I think it's an example uh, of this criminalization of politics. Uh, I don't think that this is something that, that's good for the country. But I think a lot of Republican voters uh, are looking at some of the things that have happened, whether it's the Department of Justice, uh, whether it is some of the things that have happened local. Uh, and I think the question is, okay, what are we going to do about it? And I've already said as president, you know, we are going to end the weaponization of federal agencies like the DOJ and FBI. We'll have a new director. We will have new leadership in the DOJ. Uh, we're going to make sure that there's a single standard of justice in this country. Now, in terms of some of these local DAs, in Florida, we've actually uh, suspended two, one in Tampa, one in Orlando, uh, over the last year uh, for failure to, to, to follow their duties and responsibilities. And as president, uh, we will lean in uh, against some of these local prosecutors if they are not uh, following the law or if they are abandoning their duty to enforce the law law evenly. So um, I think that I don't know how it's going to affect anything politically. Uh, for me, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, let's get this country in a good direction. Uh, we need to have confidence in our justice system again. But before we get there, you know, we need major, major accountability. What I need is I need Savage DeSantis to show up in a moment like this. It, this, this is completely notwithstanding the fact that he's competing against President Trump for the Republican presidential nomination right now. You didn't have time to read the indictment. This indictment is one of the most significant political developments that I can remember. It's not just about Trump. It's not just about putting Trump in jail. It's not just about preventing Trump from being president. All of that is bad enough. This is something that could impact us. I mean, how difficult is it to come out and say this is a tyrannical abuse of power and not just, oh, we're going to stop the weaponization of the federal government. What does that mean? Are you going to abolish the FBI? Are you going to abolish the Department of Homeland Security? Are you going to raise the organizations that have violated the constitutional rights of American citizens? Because a new director at the FBI is not enough. And then at the end, I don't know how this is going to impact me. Let me tell you, this is going to impact all of us. All of us. Hi, guys. It's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.